In this video, we are going to look forward with the differential form of Gauss's law for magnetic field. We are going to look forward on to visualizing divergence with some very simple examples. This video is going to be very simple with a minimal mathematical equation and just understanding the concept of what is magnetic field in the differential form. Welcome to Physics for Students. My name is Shonak and today's video is about the differential form of Gauss's law which I am going to keep it very simple, not much of difficult mathematical equations but just understanding the concept. So before we go ahead with this video, first what are the topics we are going to cover? So we are going to understand the equation, we are also going to learn forward what are the different components of the equation. We are going to take a very simple example of how to visualize a divergence as some simple examples in which the divergence becomes uh, much better to understand and what we know by the term the book's balance. So stay tuned and watch the video till the end. It is going to be simple uh, with minimal mathematical equation but is going to be very important in understanding the concept. So first what we do is that we start trying to understand uh, the basic equation. Okay. So one thing you need to understand is that the continuous nature of magnetic field makes the differential form of Gauss's law quite simple. So the differential form is written as this, right? This is the differential form for magnetic fields. The left hand side of this equation is a mathematical description of the divergence of the magnetic field. What I mean by divergence is the tendency of the magnetic field to flow more strongly away from a point rather than towards the point, right? So it is a tendency of the magnetic field to flow away from this point rather than towards the point. So one way is to understand why this is true is by an analogy with the electric field for which the divergence at any location is proportional to the electric charge density at that location, right? So, since it is not possible to isolate magnet poles, that means if you cut a bar magnet, it will still have a north and south pole, right? So, the, uh, the magnetic charge density must be zero everywhere, right? So, here it is, it shows that the divergence of the magnetic field at any point is zero. So you can tell that this equation is important and it uh, proclaims that magnetic monopoles are not possible. Now once we dissect the equation, that means we take the component by component, what we get is this is the del operator, this arrow sign, uh, it shows that it is a vector. This is the differential operator or the del or the nabla operator. The dot product turns the del operator in the divergence. B, we already know it is a magnetic field measured in Tesla. And if you have noticed my earlier video in this series, I have discussed and I have shown actually how this term B is being coined. And this is the arrow which shows that magnetic field is a vector quantity. So the expression is the entire left hand side of the differential form of Gauss's law and represents the divergence of the magnetic field, right? So this is more or less the equation. So this is the equation which says that it is the divergence of the magnetic field. And uh, so you can understand that since divergence is by definition the tendency of a field to flow away from a point more strongly than towards the point, and since no point sources or sinks of the magnetic field has till now be found, uh, till the time I'm making this video, the amount of incoming field is exactly the same as the amount of outgoing field at every point, right? So here you see that these are the very simple examples of divergence which you can find in the playlist. I have made an exclusive video on divergence. This is the positive, this is the negative, and this is the zero divergence. So this equation, which is the integral form of the Gauss's law, also says that the total magnetic flux passing through any closed surface is zero. So this is the integral form which says that the total magnetic flux passing through any field is zero and this is the divergence of the magnetic field which shows that the divergence of the magnetic field is zero. Okay, so how can we visualize divergence? I mean to say it is a mathematical concept, we saw them, but is there any way to, uh, I would say, 
visualize the divergence. So before I go ahead, I need to tell you something very important. That in general, you will see in the in the books of physics and mathematics, there is something which is called a del dot, and there is something which is also written as div. Okay, so this uh, I would say del dot and div more or less are same. I mean to say the calculation wise, otherwise in the books what you see it is the same. But I would say that this del dot is used when we are working in coordinates. Yeah, but there is a difference, very subtle. So this del dot is used when we are working with coordinates which are usually flat in real number r, right? And div is used generally for manifolds, that means curvature or anything which has got no without coordinates. So I can say that the inner product notation is helpful for remembering uh, what the coordinate formula for the divergence. But if you want to work without coordinates, it just gets the way. So uh, this is just a quick note. So this del uh, with an arrow vector means this. So we are partially differentiating x, y, and this should be z. I'm so sorry. This should be actually z. So uh, when we see something like this, div x equals to this, so this will be equal to this, and uh, we can say that uh, uh, this notation, you know, when we are writing this, it is the same formula as usual for the exterior product, right? It is the same as this. So I, I mean to say it is nothing uh, you need to really take a note on it to understand. But in some way, if you're really going deep into the laws of physics and you want to understand uh, what is the difference between del dot and div, then you can think it in this way. However, in the next few minutes of my video, I'm going to use the div operator just to give you a difference that I'm working on a flat coordinate in R. Okay, so we get uh, some kind of a vector, uh, I mean to say the divergence, uh, which is 1, 2, and ultimately it leads to 0. So if you take this kind of an equation, so vector field 1, 2 has 0 divergence. So we see this kind of a figure right on the left hand side. You can see these arrows, which I marked here in red, these are all pointing outwards, right? So the radial vectors which are pointing outwards will get a kind of a zero river just just taking a very simple example to uh, uh, tell you this wherever if we get this kind of a uh, figure uh, this kind of a figure we get an equation which where uh, we are calculating the divergence with minus y and x and what we get vector field minus y and x has zero divergence that means these fields which is uh, marked now in red these are going in this way the second is going this way the third it is going this way and the fourth is going this way. So it is the same amount uh, of flowing out. So at every point the I can say the outflowingness of the field is zero. Therefore you expect that the divergence of both fields to be zero and this is the case. So you can see that the radially vector fields which are pointing outwards so that is had got a zero divergence. So let us see an example uh, something like this field R has got uh, minus x and y and if I do the calculate the divergence it gives negative 2 that means this kind of a figure right so at any given point more I would say vector or magnet or I would say uh, you know liquid it is flowing in in uh, the more fluid is flowing in I would say rather than what is flowing out and therefore the outgoingness of the field is negative so here you see the radial vectors are all pointing towards the towards a specific point, right? So what is do is that that there's a radial vector is pointing towards rather than out, more fluid is flowing in rather than out, and hence the tendency to move out is more than going on, right? Going inside. So hence the divergence is negative. So this is a kind of a I would say uh, I can, you see that the what is called a negative divergence. You can visualize now things are radial vectors pointing towards and the outflowness uh, increases and in this case the outflowing is more towards the point so it has got a negative divergence. Okay, so I will just uh, show you certain simple examples. So what if we get a kind of an f equals to this and we need to find the divergence at 0, 2 and minus 1. So what we go is that it's simple. So we calculate the divergence uh, at f which uh, equals to this and the power of anything is 1. So divergence of 0, 0,2.1 is this 
and once we cancel out we get minus 1 minus 1 cancel it out and we get a plus 4 so when we get a plus 4 that means that we have got a positive divergence all right very simple example just to demonstrate you the idea that if we get certain you know i would say fictitious numbers then we can calculate the differentials and what we get is a positive divergence so more fluid is flowing out than at the point so it has got a positive divergence what if we uh, try to find out this right uh, how to find whether fxy with this values is a magnetic field so just remember that if f is a magnetic field then its divergence would be zero so if the result is zero then then it has got a zero level it has got a magnetic field so let's find it out we take this equation right and we uh, just do the partial differentials so what we get is one so one again is basically a positive divergence what means that hence f cannot be a magnetic field because it has got a positive value one right so this is the kind of a figure which we get right so this is uh, because it has got a positive divergence hence by the definition of gauss's law it cannot have a magnetic field okay so we come to the last part of the video now here i just uh, wanted to show you that you see that the uh, the, the integral form of gauss's law of magnetic field is something this so the magnetic flux across any closed surface is zero and this is the integral form right now what we get is the differential form also so the divergence of the magnetic field at any point is zero now i just wanted to show you uh, both the uh, integral and the differential form together because there are certain in, uh, important points uh, this is the differential and the top is the integral form so just understand that the integral form of the magnetic field of gauss's law takes the surface as a whole uh, uh, i mean to say that the integral sign with s as the surface integral remember that it is not a volume integral so we are actually calculating the entire volume of a closed Gaussian surface. Whereas the differential part takes the local points. And if you have seen my uh, video on differential geometry, I always tell that topology speaks on a global platform and differentiation is more on a local. So you see the left hand side of the equation of the differential form is the divergence operator. And the definition says the div divergence of the magnetic field at any point is zero. That means the in differential part, I am taking the local points. That is why I am saying that at any point is zero. Whereas on the integral part, I am taking the magnetic flux across any closed field. This is a very important observation. And that is why I call that it speaks the same thing and the book's balance. That means uh, philosophically, if you consider that at one point of time, at one point in our understanding of maths, physics philosophy everything merges and comes at the same thing so that integral form uh, which takes the surface as a whole while the differential form taking the local points and finding the divergence to be zero it actually i mean to say overall not mathematically it overall it speaks the same thing that is why the differential form when it's going back to the integral and the integral form when it's going back to differentiation it always gives the same result right and I, that is why I call the books balance. That means in the laws of nature, there is nothing which won't balance out. This is that we will be uh, speaking about the integral form of Faraday's law in the next video. Do uh, like, comment and subscribe to my channel. And let me know how you like my video in the comment box. Till then, bye bye and see you very soon. Have a nice day ahead. Bye. Now, you can be a part of our team. You can send your scientific articles, essays, research papers, lesson plans on a particular subject of science. For further details, please write to us at editor at physicsforstudents.com. Stay safe and happy.